Hey there everybody and welcome back. In today's video I'm going to be walking you through why I do not feel that the Nespresso machine is poised just yet to be your one and only coffee maker. So basically I'm going to highlight the benefits as well as some of the negatives to this device and why I don't think it's yet set up to replace things like the Ninja Hot and Cold or the Chemex or really most other traditional brewing machines. Now with that being said before we get started don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the channel for new content. So we're going to go ahead and jump straight in. I'm going to do a high level overview of this machine. If you want to see the more in-depth review of this Virtuo Next, where I'm actually going to do the walk around, show the box, packaging, and kind of explain how it works in more detail, check the link in the description. But for now, the high level overview, it's a really simple machine. So you'll see right here, you would simply slide this to unlock it. The machine will open. You would insert your pod close it, lock it, and press this button. So to walk you through how the little carriage return works, so I have a used pod here. So if we were to try to use this, we would just press down, lock it, and then hit this button to start brewing. When you're done, you would slide this across and it would open, and then this will typically grab this little pod here and drop it in the back. So really, really simple process and then it will just automatically know. So you'll see there's no buttons up here. You just have this one. So you're not selecting brew sizes and styles. I make that point and it's gonna come up and why it's relevant in a second. So right here, for example, if I wanted to brew this, this is the carafe style. So I would basically drop an unused pod in here, close it, lock it, use it just like I did, and then it would fall through to the back. Now. Covering the good things, because I think the list is a little bit shorter because it's what you would expect. So most people get this for the espresso, and I will tell you the machine works great for that. When you insert the pods, if I'm not mistaken, this is the barcode that the machine is reading. We know that from, I believe, Keurig actually tried that a while back. They had some issues with it, so the system didn't really work for them. I think it works a little bit better for an espresso because of exactly why the machine is designed. It's it's designed to specialize with espresso, one size of coffee, and then the carafe style coffee. That's really all that it makes. So you have the standard espresso, double espresso, the regular pod, which I'll show you right now, and then we have the carafe pod. So I'll break down the strengths. So it brews these very, very well, and you can see that you're actually getting more coffee. You can feel the weight difference. So this is what would be a standard cup of coffee. I think for this one, it's 7.7 .7 fluid ounces or something along those lines. And then this is going to be a much larger cup. I don't think it's enough to be what I would call a full carafe, but it's a decent bit of coffee still. So coming to the strengths, what this does, which is those four, if I'm not mistaken, those are the only four, it brews those four things very well. Single espresso, double espresso, a standard cup of coffee, which for my taste is a little bit small, and then a carafe style. So I have a large coffee cup and this fills that cup with a little bit of room for milk or cream or oat milk or whatever. So I'm going to say that I don't think that the names are 100% accurate. And I'm, this is where we're going to get into the weaknesses in a little bit. So to start, you get this nice foam, uh, this nice foam on every cup of coffee that you're brewing. And it does seem like the cups are brewed to the specific type of coffee that are in them. Because of that barcode, it'll actually set different brewing styles. So you'll see that crema that most people talk about, that foamy layer on the top. It's very present for certain cups of coffee and espresso, and for others, not so much. So you can actually see, feel, and taste the difference in the different types of coffee. And I believe that the Nespresso coffees are very high quality as well. So overall, I think it's a great machine, and some people love that. So jumping into the negatives, I don't think that everyone wants that frothy cup every single time. And I think that's where this machine falls short. So with the machine like the Ninja Hot and Cold, for example, what I love about this is you can very easily, we'll, we'll move this forward a little bit and kind of compare the two side by side. When we have this Ninja coffee maker, I have all these different styles. I can choose cold brew, over ice, classic, rich. So you're able to choose the temperature of the water and you're also able to select the size. So if I want a small cup, a medium, large, the carafe, etc., and a carafe on this Ninja machine produces quite a bit of coffee. It's enough to almost fill this, which is the amount of water you would put in it. 
So this is where the weakness comes in. When it comes to the Nespresso machine, you just get whatever this pod will produce. So if I want this pod and I wanted it to be an actual carafe, so enough to fill this, I'm out of luck. I have to brew two or three or four of these. So I wish they gave you the ability to choose the size and actually choose how much water goes in. So you don't have as much control or customization options. Next up, Nespresso makes it very, very difficult for people who want to grind and roast their own coffee. So for example, if I wanted to take uh, some coffee that someone gave me as a, basically like as a gift, this is whole bean coffee. I can't grind it, roast it, and then put it in a refillable pod. Even looking around online, some of the refillable pods can be a little bit expensive, and some people complain about how difficult it can be to actually start roasting or, uh, sorry, uh, drinking or brewing coffee. So I think that the biggest pitfall of this Nespresso machine is you have zero ability to customize anything you're putting in it. So if you want this Colombian coffee that I bought from the Nespresso website, if I wanted this brewed a specific way, maybe I wanted hotter water, like the rich setting on my Ninja machine, I can't do that. Maybe I want a larger cup. I don't have that option either. Maybe I decide I don't want all of the foam. I also don't have that option. So when I'm comparing to something like the Chemex here, which is a standard pour over, if I pour over, there's no crema. There's no like foamy layers or anything like that. You're just getting coffee like a standard hot liquid. And I can control the temperature with this, the amount, the beans that go in it. Whereas with Nespresso, you can only get what they and other companies who make these specific pods give you. And you're stuck with whatever brew style this barcode scans into. I'm not a huge fan of that. I have seen some options online to buy these tinfoil covers, and basically you can reuse this bottom part and then put a new tinfoil cover over top and put your own coffee grounds in here, which is, from what I've seen and read, probably the better option. The downside to that is you're still limited to the brewing styles that are available for these specific cups. So you would have to keep three to four of these to brew your own espresso, different types of coffee. Uh, and honestly, the again, the coffee sizes for these are a little bit smaller. Now, another complaint I have about the Nespresso machine is these pods are pretty expensive. So the carafe style are slightly more expensive, which you would expect because they do produce more coffee. But I feel like Nespresso spends a lot of time trying to make these really nice, fancy boxes. And they spend so much time on that that it increases the cost of the pods. And I'm sure it's not that much. But I just feel like with traditional coffee bags, they don't look like there's as much to them. This is some relatively thick cardboard. You have this special way to open it. Um, they have all of the paint and ink that's gone into it. And I just feel like if you send a generic sleeve with a small Nespresso label, they could lower cost a bit. Because these tend to be anywhere from a dollar to dollar thirty for a pod or more. And the only way to get discounts from the Nespresso website is usually if you buy between 5 to 7 or 10 of these sleeves, which means that you're going to be spending on average about $100, anywhere from $50 to $100 per Nespresso order. And most people, when you go to the grocery store, you just want to pick up a traditional bag of coffee for anywhere from $5 for a cheap bag to, let's just say, 10 or 15 So it's a very, very expensive process as well. So overall, I would say the reason I don't think that this is going to replace your day-to-day -day coffee maker is you don't have much that you can do to kind of customize. It's, it's catered towards people that like a very specific type or types of coffee and that want that consistently. For those of you who like to try new things, go out and grab your own bag, try different brewing styles and brewing methods and kind of get excited by that, I don't think the Nespresso is going to be the one-stop shop for you. So all in all, I think it's a great machine and I think it works if you're a coffee lover who likes to try new things. I think it could be a great machine for you, but I don't think it should be the only one. I would still recommend at the very least a pour over to go with it. And again, primary reason is they don't allow you the option to choose your water temperature settings, the quantity, or anything like that. Now, I'm sure some of the newer machines will allow you to do that or 
already may, but the majority of the machines that I've seen, they pretty much just brew what you get. And that's what's based on the pod, which I don't like. Some people like a little bit more control over that. So all in all, I think it's a great machine. It's definitely on the pricier end, especially when it comes to the weekly or monthly coffee orders. But the machine itself, it is definitely uh, consistent. Every morning you're going to get the exact same cup of coffee when you're using a machine like this. So all in all, I think it's a worthwhile thing to look into purchasing, especially because it's in a similar price to other coffee makers out there, and it does make coffee and espresso, but downside is cost and lack of customization. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below, and I'll see you all in the next video.